Well, thank you, John, and uh, buonasera. È un piacere essere qui, uh, but I'm afraid I will now have to continue in English. It, it really is an honor to be able to tell you a bit more about our initiative called Our Planet, Our Future. And it is absolutely true that there are many valuable programs and projects out there to address the climate emergency. And although I do not claim to be totally objective, I really think that our planet, our future, has some discernible features that nobody else has. Although I loved what Michel said earlier about the pledge, and it looks like we are very much aligned. But before I continue, let's, let's have a look at our video to give you a better understanding of where we come from and what we plan to do. Uh, so, Umberto, could you please go to slide three? On October the 4th, 2021, a unique gathering of faith leaders representing more than 80% of the world's population took place at the Vatican. Hosted by Pope Francis, the faith leaders joined forces to warn that the world is facing a critical moment as the climate crisis threatens the future of the planet and life. The faith leaders called on everyone, whatever their belief or worldview, to listen to the cry of the earth and pledge meaningful actions. Inspired by the call of the faith leaders, Our Planet, Our Future was introduced as a new and exciting framework of hope and courage for believers and non-believers alike. Our Planet, Our Future will build on innovative activation, global partnership and collaboration with the goal of mobilizing at least 1.5 billion people to take measurable climate action. At their gathering, the faith leaders said, we have the moral obligation to cooperate in the healing of the planet. We need to act together to inspire and energize each other. Now it is the time to take transformative action as a common response. Heeding the words of the faith leaders, our planet, our future, will work to turn the current crisis into an opportunity to rethink and rebuild the world we want for ourselves and for our children. Climate change is a grave threat. Our planet, our future will enable common climate action at all levels, from individual behavioral changes to high-level political decision-making processes, seeking solutions within ourselves, within our communities, our organizations, our businesses, our nations, and with nature. The faith leaders said, future generations will never forgive us if we squander this precious opportunity. We have inherited a garden. We must not leave a desert to our children. Our planet, our future, is a 10-year campaign of global action to work together for the survival and flourishing of humanity and the natural world. This is our time. This is our planet. This is our future. Let us join together to write the next chapter of the human story. One and a half billion people in the next 10 years. That's what we aim for. I agree, it is a bit less ambitious than the two million, the two billion Michel is aiming for. Uh, but still, you know, originally we thought one and a half billion was quite an impressive number until a cardinal at the Vatican pointed out to me that there are 1.3 billion Catholics alone in the world. So getting to 1.5 billion should be easy peasy. He joked. Of course, it's not going to be easy. 
But I think we are in the process of designing some exciting programs that offer actually everyone the possibility to participate in them. You know, when we started our Planet of Future, we looked into research on what it takes to get people activated. Well, when it comes to the climate emergency, people are overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of the problem. Michelle in her presentation also mentioned that. And then people say, let governments and businesses solve the problem because as an individual, I cannot make a meaningful contribution. But the fact of the matter is that that is not true. Every one of us can make a difference and play an important role in addressing the climate emergency. And that is how we came up with the idea of mindful eating. Because eating is something that we all do every day. And if we become aware of what we eat and how we eat, we will be able to recognize that even a small change in our eating habits has a direct positive effect on our own health as well as the health for the planet. Let's face it, we all know what we are talking about here. It is all about consuming less red meat and sugar and consuming more fruits, vegetables and nuts. The effect red meat has on CO2 levels and land use is dramatic. If, if we can go one slide further or two slides further, we will see that. Yes, here. No, one back, please. Yes, that one. That is, you know, an, a, a study done by Harvard University where it, it, it really shows what the dramatic effect is, um, you know, of red meat on greenhouse gases and land use. And if we cut back on red meat, that will have an almost instantly measurable positive effect on CO2 levels. Now, a few weeks ago, someone told me a very interesting story that happened in England some time ago. A few Catholic bishops asked their congregations to return to an old Catholic tradition of foregoing meat on Fridays. The University of Cambridge picked up on that story and did some research and came to the conclusion that if these few congregations would actually not eat meat on Fridays, it would save more than 55,000 tons of carbon a year. That is, in terms of CO2 emissions, the equivalent of 82,000 fewer people taking a return trip from London to New York over one year. Now imagine what would happen if Pope Francis reinstated meatless Fridays across the global church? It could mitigate millions of tons of greenhouse gases annually. And part of the mindful eating campaign is to try to achieve exactly that. So if we can go to the next slide. You know, changing our eating habits is all about changing our behavior. Uh, and reaching out to as many people as possible. And that is why we are working together with renowned organizations. We have that on the next slide that can help us with the science, the data, top notch creativity, and distribution. And I'm absolutely proud that Rotary is one of those organizations we are working with. Next slide, please. mentioned behavioral science, and I, I will not go into too much detail on the behavioral science that will be a crucial part of the mindful eating campaign, other than to say that appealing to people's fears, which is often being used when talking about the climate, climate emergency, is not going to get them in an action mode, as Richard Attenborough so rightly said in the opening video. And if we were to tell people to completely stop eating red meat and use sugar, that's also not going to work. People have to get the feeling of being in control of the situation. 
and that their personal ability to take action and create a positive impact makes them feel good about themselves. And changing, and we will see that in the next slide, and changing some of our eating habits plays perfectly into the scenario of empowering people to do the right thing for themselves, their loved ones, and the planet. Now, if we go to some of the next slides, maybe we can skip a few ones. Yes, this is the, the toolkit. Please, please go on. We will get to the next steps uh, of the campaign exactly. You know, we plan to launch Mindful Eating in the first half of next year, uh, including the next steps is bringing together the best and the brightest in behavioral and nutritional science, including Harvard University, including the EAT Foundation in Europe, including, uh, you know, scientists from the European Commission. And it's really forging an impressive coalition of like-minded organizations to lay the foundation for our campaigns. And based on what we now know is that the most likely regions and country where the mindful eating campaign will be first launched are the European Union, California and Brazil, focusing on children and their specific problems. Now, in conclusion, Mindful eating is really a major effort to reduce our collective carbon footprint, seamlessly aligned with the call to action made by the faith leaders last year, with potentially very significant impacts on agriculture, food production, waste, and much more. And we're really very proud that Rotary is going to be part of this campaign. Well, of course, you know, there are many other places where you can uncover projects that work for you. And, and, you know, I see there are a few here, you know, ranging from Project Drawdown and Drawdown Review, the Environmental Sustainability Road to Reaction Group. They have dozens of projects that can make a difference, as well as projects that are underway and completed. And the Rotary Climate Action team network and the global climate pledge that have toolkits which support you in identifying your interested areas and associated projects but whatever your interest please make a commitment and take on projects that is what we aim for and that is what our planet our future stands for thank you and i hope you have a wonderful conference in the season